Well, hello, everybody. How are you? Absolutely fantastic to be here once again. It is Friday the 13th. Unlucky for some, but not for us today because we have got an amazing guest in the chair. As far as on passive is concerned, uh, I haven't got any updates for you. I uh, haven't heard anything at all. Uh, but we are very hopeful over the next couple of days that we will hear from our CEO, Ash Mufara. So please keep plugged in. And obviously, uh, he can come on any time on to any show. So please, please, please make sure that you are uh, constantly plugged in to the major groups. Uh, a lot of speculation today, wasn't it, on the, a certain gentleman's birthday. Uh, I woke up this morning in the UK to uh, best wishes, wishes for a, our very own Chris Johnson for his birthday. Uh, no, it's not. 24th of May, I believe it is. Uh, May, sorry, November. Uh, so I, where that came from, I don't know. But... I am very, very happy and privileged to be able to get the big man himself, Mr. Hey, 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 Chris Johnson in the chair alongside me today. So without further ado, let's bring him in. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Hey, 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 Red. What's happening? I'm doing there good. There you go. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted you to say. Fantastic. As if we'd rehearsed it. We haven't, but never mind. It came it very well anyway. Uh, and do you know something? You are up right up there with one of the most famous people uh, in On Passive. Obviously, everybody knows our CEO, Ash Mufara. Everybody knows uh, his almost second in command, Marty uh, Johnson. Marty Johnson? Marty DeGarmo. <laughs> but you probably are in there third uh next to him uh as a very prominent figure in on passive now we're going to get into on passive in a little while uh but really what the chair is all about is to find out a little bit more about the people that i invite in and you are exactly the same chris so let's get going with a few questions first of all uh chris tell us where you live and any family members and what you used to do for a living Good morning, Red Redford. Good morning, Janie in the background. Thank you for having me. It's always an honor. This chair feels a little lower since Marty sat in it last time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Chris Johnson. I was born in Michigan, where I'm still uh, staying. I was born in 1965 on November 24th, not today, even though... Uh, I got woken up again with a bunch of phone calls and I'm like, oh no, this, this has got to be red. Red had to do this or Marty had to do it. One of you two, but um, <laughs> well, I've done many things in my life. What was the question? Now I'm all messed No, up. no, just tell, tell us about your family at the, to start oh, with. Okay. Mate. I have, I was uh, married for 13 years. I've been divorced for over 20. Now I have two beautiful kids, Amanda and Joey. Uh, Joey's 31. Amanda's 28. Or 29, I'll still get mad at me. But uh, my mom and dad, they've been, they passed. My grandparents passed. A lot of people in my family's passed in the last couple of years. So, but I have a, a, a great relationship with my ex wife, or I will say Donna, because I don't like using that term ex wife. And that's the way it should be. When you got kids, Absolutely. no matter if you're divorced, be happy for each other. So I really like, like that. But that's pretty, I'm pretty boring, Red, actually. No, you're not actually, because, and I'll tell you why I know you're not pretty boring, is because I know you've got uh, an amazing story about your work life. And I know it's something that you really want to uh, tell the audience all about. Now, we've had a few discussions, haven't we, about how you've worked and all the rest of it. So give us a little bit of a rundown of your life of obviously when you left school and then college and you moved into, into jobs. And just tell us about the struggles that you've been through through your early days in your life as far as working is concerned to provide for your family. Okay, well, I want to I want to make something clear to everyone that's listening, whoever listens. Um, I have a, a decent life right now, something that I'm very comfortable with, but it always was not that way. And this is why I can relate to a lot of people in Unpassive and the world, because uh, I was broke like broke never been before years ago. Um, I did 
many jobs. I was a dreamer, a risk taker. I did everything I could to try to earn a living. I picked hubcaps off the road um, to sell them. I sold them for five bucks a piece. I sold books on Amazon. I, uh, I, uh, I Chris, let me let me just. I'm going to stop you there because there's more to this hubcap uh, story than just what he's telling here. So tell it. Tell us about the hubcap story because. What you used to do was you used to scout them out, didn't you, on your yeah. way to work? God, t yeah. Tell them the story. I had an hour, two-hour drive to work. So on the way, on the freeway, of course, I-75 in Michigan, there's potholes all over the place. So people would hit those potholes, and those those hubcaps would go flying. So on my way to work, I would mark them all out where they're at. And on the way home from work, I would stop on the freeway, on a hill, whatever, and pick them up. But the worst part was, and I was this is where I was really, really needed money. pretty much. After my divorce, which was the worst time in my life, I went broke. Everything I made went to either my bills or my kids. And it was just, uh, it was a hard time. So in the midst of the hard time, nothing, you know, I'm thinking what else can happen to me? I found a couple hubcaps on the way home going northbound. I had to jump over the medium wall because the uh, the hubcaps were on the other side. So as I was doing that, now, man, it's like five o'clock in the morning. I jumped over. I hit a rock and I broke my ankle. I hobbled to get the hubcap, which was broke anyway. Hobbled back to my truck. <laughs> yeah. Hobbled back, ju tried jumping over the wall, literally crawled over and got into my truck and realized, oh man, I just did something really bad. And then I, it cost me like six, five, six weeks of work because you can't work in an auto factory with a broken ankle or anything broken, actually. But it was the worst type of my life and i thought oh my god what am i gonna do now so, so you were so you were broke financially yeah. your leg was broke literally <laughs> and you couldn't work for five weeks so no, what I, did you do i sat around thinking about what i can do to make money to keep myself going and that's when i got into the books uh i i used to love going to garage sales and yard sales and i always realized there's people are always just trying to get rid of their books so I would go in there and they had 100 books. I had a lot of people even donate books to me. And I would say, well, how much you want for them? Uh, what do you got? I said, I got five bucks. I'll take them all. And, and they would give them to me because they just wanted to get rid of them. I would take them home, sort them out. I went on to Amazon and I would sell them. And I actually did really good with it. And that kept me up, kept me afloat for a while until I could get back to work. But I'm telling you. Chris Johnson knows what it's like to be broke. And it was at least three years where I struggled immensely. And I didn't know. I was at that point where like, I don't know what to do anymore. Uh, like a lot of people get. I just don't know what to do anymore. And I'm thinking, my God, what am I going to do? Uh, anything I could to find a way to make, make some kind of money, I would do it. But it didn't always work out. And, yep, I got behind. I got in debt. So when people listen to me, I'm trying to tell you I was in your spot. I know what it's like to be heartbroken. I know what it's like to be broke, 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 literally, uh, and it's just not fun. So coming into here, when I s hear all these stories from people I can relate to, I would say a lot of the same, you know, people with situations, some have a lot worse. I was thankful that I didn't break both my ankles. You know, I'm like, that's how I look. It was a blessing. For some reason, it, it gave me the opportunity to stop and think instead of going to work. I explained many times that when you have a job like I had to, which was a good paying job, insurance, everything. The problem was it makes you stop thinking. I've said this a million times. You stop thinking because, oh, this is it. I, I don't have to worry. I go to work, do my job, come home, I get paid. But I was my entire life, I came from an entrepreneur family where they own restaurants. Uh, my mom and dad own their own businesses. And I'm like, this this has got to be something better for me out there. So I, I actually tried buying a marina. Couldn't do it. Banks were saying, that. oh, no, we can't. Uh, I came up with... Um, Baby's first wave car flags I invented. I actually did pretty good with those. I had them in 26 states in hospital gift stores. Uh, there was one company that wanted to own the exclusive rights to it. And uh, I guess my, my wife at the time said no. And I'm like, man, we should have took that deal. But we didn't. And we kept doing it. And then when they crashed 9-11 uh, into the plane, everyone stopped spending money. Everyone stopped buying. So, boom, that halted. And I'm like, okay, another another roadblock in my way. I got to come up. So then I start drawing things. I, I wanted to design an indoor sand volleyball court.
because people love volleyball. I mean, it was a big thing back then, but I'm like, well, in Michigan, you can only play it because when the weather comes, you're not outside. So I wanted to create an entire uh, ecosystem of just sand volleyball where sand courts inside air conditioning, a uh, little, you know, a little tiki bar where people go hang out and afterwards and have like a beach party. Uh, again, nice. that costed millions of dollars to do. And I'm thinking banks, are, I tried, banks aren't going to give me the money. I was just an auto worker uh, at that time, probably making uh, uh, 50 or $60,000 a year at that time, which was a lot of money back then. But it's like, no way you don't have the, what, you know, what do you have to back you up for all this? I don't, it was just an idea. And years ago, 50 years ago, you could sell a bank a good idea and they would go for it. But with all the other sure. stuff that happened, yeah, I even tried getting federal grants to get money to start a business and that didn't even work for me. So I'm like, man, I'm a dead end. Everything I try to do, like my son's going through right now, you know, he's, he's trying to find his way and what can he do best? He loves technology, but I tried telling him, it doesn't matter how many walls you hit and they're, and you're going to hit them. Everyone does. But you just got to keep your mind going. If you fall into a depressive stage and you think, man, I'm never going to, I'm never going to accomplish that. You're wrong. People have accomplished things that are so great that had nothing. And they weren't 20 years old. Some of them were 60 and 70 years old. But the thing is, they kept going no matter what. And let me tell you, it hurts being broke. I know it. I'm sure Red has been there. It's not fun. Three we, times. <laughs> it's, not, it's not fun. So, um, I could go on and on, Red, but I just want people to know that I have a good, comfortable life right now, and I'm having. But fun it, with it, it 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 certainly sounds like you've always been a dreamer, and I think this is uh, again one of the recurring things I find out about people in the chair is that majority of people who have been in the chair have always been dreamers. I mean, like we had Lily Jackson in yesterday again, yeah, a big good. passion for dreaming, you know, and all the rest of it, and I think you are one of these people as well that has always had a dream. Otherwise you'd have just done your ABC job. You know, you've yeah. done your nine till five ABC and thanks very much. I'm, I'm earning decent money. So let's just go back to the auto trader uh, business <laughs> at the moment. So how long did you, how long did you do in the uh, auto uh, industry? I did 32 years, but if you counted the hours that I worked, it was probably like 46 years. <laughs> okay, and what and what made what made you uh, retire from that? It, was it was it a financial thing, or was it a health thing, or was it no, redundancy? Or I I pretty much worked myself to death. Literally, my last eight years was 130 hours, seven days a week straight. Wow. Didn't really know what time it was, and uh, I went on a vacation. I would try to go on one to two nice vacations a year just to get away from it. And I told you what ruins a good vac vacation is when you're thinking about going back to work. And I was actually in Mexico. I went to the inner city of Mexico to check out all the cathedrals and churches, which is absolutely beautiful. And I thought, man, I don't, I don't want to work anymore. I'm done. I called my boss up. He didn't believe me. Uh, I called the union up, say, put my papers in. They didn't believe me because that's, that's <laughs> who I was. All I did was work. I mean, if Chris Johnson wasn't at work, there was something wrong. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's great to make a lot of money, but when you live like that, you don't know what day it is or time it is. Uh, I am blessed to have the job. I took advantage of every hour I could work and make mo as much money as I can. But in the long run, it, it did hurt me. Uh, it did stop me from doing things I wanted to do. You know, sometimes when you're in a bad spot, Red, you think of things, man, mate, why not try it? Why not? Yeah. Why not go rent a truck and sell ice cream? I got an aunt that was made beautiful businesses out of it. You know, why not make something and go sell it at party stores? There's millions of ways to make money. Uh, and that was how I always been. My grandparents owned five bar restaurants. Uh, so I was in the, uh, the restaurant business as a young kid. And my grandma always says, you're going to own your own bar someday. And I looked in the bars too. I'm thinking, no, nah, too much liability. I don't really, yeah, <laughs> especially really with you, especially with you as the owner. Yeah, loads I mean, of liability. <laughs> I, I didn't. To be honest, there's nothing wrong with going to the bars and having fun, but it was something that I didn't want to wrap my life around. I have friends that own bars, and it's constantly, 
you know, it's it's really not a good atmosphere. It's good to go have fun there, but to be in it all day, seven days. Yeah, a week, yeah. Let's... Well, that's uh, that's my, that's my trade. That is, and I I know we know fully well how it all works. It's uh, right. it's certainly not a bed of roses, that's for sure. So how yeah. so how how long ago was it that you retired from your job? It's a good question. I think it's been seven or eight years now. Uh, I, I don't even, that's the thing is I never went back to work. I made a phone call after four phone calls and they believe in me. Uh, I never went back in there. I went back one more time, actually. It's a lie. And I had to sign paperwork off and I walked out and I had friends, you know, for 32 years, I waved to them and they're like, I can't believe he's doing it. Uh, that's what I'm doing. Um, uh, you so, can't work so your whole life away, man. No, uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, so, you, you finished work about seven years ago. Uh, what did you do in that interim time um, before On Passive came your way? Well, uh, before that, my mom got sick. So uh, basically came here and decided, you know, she's going to need help. Watched it for, at first it was easy, but then when she went full-blown Parkinson's, it was uh, it was a challenge. Um, it was two and a half years of of being with her all the time. I really do do nothing actually but on passive. I am thankful for a passive kept me going because I couldn't do anything. I couldn't leave the house. We had the pandemic. I didn't want her to get, get it. And so I locked myself in the house for two years. And luckily I had good people like you and, and the founders to talk to on a computer every day, but absolutely. So let, let's, let's bring this all the way around now to on passive. Obviously we found out an awful lot about you, uh, through your life and your working environment, etc. Um, I I know who your invitee was for On Passive, but tell the people about uh, how you got involved in On Passive. <laughs> Peter Shore called me, and we had both retired, and he called me up, and I, I remember I was working on something. Hey, Pete, what's up? And he says, "Man, I got you. Got to listen to this." And over the years at work, Pete and I used to discuss. Uh, let's do something. Let's create something. And I said, you know what? And I talked to him for like 10 minutes and I asked the normal questions. Are you making any money? Uh, do I got to buy books and CDs? Cause I don't want to do that. And uh, he says, no, Chris. So I went to go get my wallet to pay, realized I left my wallet in the car, ran out there. I paid, I got into it. I waited about a week to two weeks uh, and started watching webinars. You had your fireside chats and yeah. I start getting on those and paying attention and listening. And I'm thinking, man, I like what I'm hearing. I mean, I loved everything about it since day one, uh, bumps and bruises along the way from people that you're trying to, uh, it's not that we wanted to convince anybody, but this is my main question. I like telling everyone, what is your bill situation? What is your life situation? What if there was something that could come along and give you that time and pay for all that. And I looked at all the years that I'm like, oh, God, I don't have enough money this month. Oh, God. And I ask people, look at what your bills are and look at what you do for a living. That's not good enough. I'm going to tell you to your face. It's not good enough. There's better out there. And boy, it found me. Thank you, Peter Shore. <laughs> <laughs> so you got into on passive now i i know this story as well but i'd love the listeners here to uh hear it as well from you now obviously myself and marty had been in a fair while longer than you had and we are always on the lookout for dynamic people who are very passionate about on passive and marty came across you didn't he and uh yes. tell us a bit about the story of you and Marty and how you met and uh, getting involved with doing some webinars. Well, of course, I was just watching you guys and showing up in some webinars. And he texts me one night. I'm like, I looked at my phone like, Marty DeGarmo, why is he texting me? He said, hey, you want to go to PNG with me? And that was a big webinar. And, and uh, I said, yeah, send me the link. And to be honest with you, I didn't know a lot about computers and links and all that so i went in there and i would say uh that's where i was born in, in the png webinar that's where i actually first met marty uh he, he had introduced me to a webinar before but never really talked to him and when i got into png and listened to their stories i'm thinking i thought about all the let's say crap i've lived through 
and nothing compared to what these people were going through. And uh, for some reason, it completely changed who I was that instant. Um, I'm not going to talk about what I did because most people know. Uh, I believe in the right hand, not telling the left hand. But it was the most amazing feeling. I remember coming back and fireside chat and Red says, what's the matter? I said, man, I'm still really emotional about what would have happened last night. I just can't believe it. And it blew me away. So people say, well, when did you really get going on impassive? I said, the night I went to Marty DeGarmo invited me to go to PNG, and I was blown away by uh, a woman called Nancy, uh, David Bacow, uh, Daniel. I mean, people that some of them have passed on by now, which breaks my heart. But these people made me say, Chris, your life's pretty good. Be thankful for it. But we're still going. We're still trying. So that that was my breaking point saying, I got to go full-blown on passive. I'm sorry. This is too important. Absolutely amazing. And I can remember as well when you uh, first started uh, doing webinars with us and uh, all the rest of it. Man, you were a bag of nerves. Do you remember all the remember the days I, banging I the table, banging, banging the, the table? <laughs> well, yeah, I think watching, and I've really learned from you guys. I've watched you quite a bit. I've watched Marty, Jeffrey, Michael, come just just tell the truth. And I think, uh, you know, you're nervous at first. I don't really think about people watching me anymore. Uh, but what I want to do is I never want to tell someone a lie. And I never, ever want to tell someone the wrong information, which I did. Uh, back in the day, we were hacked and someone posted. Chris Johnson said, this is a scam right into the back office, if you remember that. This is right when yeah, I started. I and I'm thinking, oh, my God, what do I do? You know, I felt felt horrible. So I made that a rule is never to uh, put something out that's wrong. And we have people that do that now. And, and, and you got to kind of put fires out every morning. You know that. But yeah, to yeah. come across as a real person to me is very important, honest. I'm a Christian. Everyone knows that I love to pray for people, including myself. But I love that about Impassive that we've met. So many different cultures, so many different stories. But the bottom line is they all have the same will to I need something better for my life and for my family. And that's how Absolutely. I've always lived. It. So. Fantastic. So let's talk about Ash Mufaro a little bit here now. And obviously you have a very good relationship with him. Um you know the same as same as some of us have which is fantastic uh he has earmarked you as i suppose the face of oh bless which yeah. you have on now uh tell us a little bit about uh that relationship you have with him and why you are so passionate about oh bless uh i guess my relationship with ash is like a normal friendship like you and i have um, I think for, uh, when I talk to Ash, I do it a little differently. I think he'll probably tell you that where if he says something that I wouldn't agree with, or I want to understand more, he explains it to me, or we have like average conversations, but I find, I found out it's like meeting, you know, a big, big famous person, which I consider him a big famous person, but he's just a normal bloke. I'm going to put it in UK in terms. <laughs> and uh, he's got a sense of humor and he shows it once in a while in the webinars, but off, off the record, he's a normal dude. Uh, he just wants to uh, create something, which I, he did create something that's going to change the world. And I love that when he called me out as Mr. Obless, I'm not a label guy. I've had, listen, I've worn many hats in my life. I've had many labels. And after I retired, I realized I don't want to be labeled anything anymore. Uh, big responsibility, lots of work. You have to uh, you have to shine all the time. And for me, I did that for years. I thought maybe I just want to crawl in a hole and be by myself and enjoy my life a little bit. But when he announced Oh Bless, uh, me as Oh Bless, and I, and I could have picked a million people. There, there's so many founders that have done so many good things in a passive. I was blown away, and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh oh, this is this is a big responsibility, Chris. And we start doing stuff with Oblast because we didn't really know what it exactly was yet. Uh, later, you know, we found out it's going to be a learning tool. It's going to be an amazing tool, but it's going to help a lot of people. The greatest accomplishment I think I did so far, and it wasn't even an Oblast project, was to help out the Seeds Academy uh, in Africa. Yeah. And not just me, 
many thousands of people pretty much built this guy an entire school. And we're still continuing to help this guy out. And man, I was never so proud of founders because a lot of people get on and talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. And people poured in money to build this school. It started off, he just needed a tin roof. Not then I think right. he built two more buildings. We built a, a, a bathroom facility, soccer ball. I still want to put a soccer ball court, a real soccer ball court out there for him. And that's coming. But I was never so proud of people. And I'm look, there's people from all over the world, different religions, definitely different cultures. We know that who donated to a guy they never met uh, and, and didn't just help one guy. It was four or 500 kids and people today are still helping them out, which I absolutely love. So uh, am I going to be proud to go there one day and visit and say, wow, I was part of this with a lot of people and look at all the smiles on these kids faces. That's really what it's about for me right now. It's, it's, it's about just really changing people's lives. I'm not, I don't want to go give someone a yacht you know, or, or a new car. I want to just see him be happy. And I think in passive is going to give a lot of people happiness. And we think at first we started, we were talking about, you know, I want to fly, learn how to fly a helicopter and big yachts and big houses. But technically I started off wrong. That's not what it was about. And it took me a couple months to figure out that this isn't about just your wealth and your security for the rest of your life. This is about changing people's lives. And that's what Ash Mafar has done his whole life, even though people beat him up for it. But I'm going to tell you this. You will see the true story of Ash Mafar in the future, and yeah, I yeah. promise you, you'll be blown away by it. promise Absolutely. you Absolutely. So we, we've got a few minutes left. Um, let me ask you about on passive. Obviously, uh, you know, you are very passionate about it, and rightly so, the same as we all are. But where and what do you think, uh, not where, but what, what are your views as far as what on passive is going to do for people out there? Whoo, man, I, I got a book I can write about that one. I think it's just uh, some of the countries that we've touched are really, really poor. Let's just be honest about that. And we have poorness in America too, in every country, but to see someone uh, I've been to Columbia a few times and I watched 89 year old men on the street selling little trinkets, lemons, limes, whatever. And these guys do this 12, 15 hours a day in the heat, and they don't make a lot of money. And I'm looking at just that one individual, and there's thousands of them. Imagine if they could make the kind of money uh, from doing nothing, not getting out on the street, not selling things all day long, and how much it would change your life. In other words, the best way I could say it is, uh, and I don't like using money, but I'll just use this for example. If there's some people in this world that barely make $300 a year to $3,000 a year. Imagine if you quadruple their income and what their lives would be like. Now, what I'm finding out is, uh, especially in Africa, we got a lot of work in Africa, P&G, every country. Imagine you have a thousand people that's, let's say, Colombia. All right. And every, every one of them are struggling. There's no jobs, uh, not good paying jobs. And you turned around those people's lives for a thousand people in Colombia. Imagine what the rest of the country is going to see is, oh my God, what is this? Look at this guy. Look at, and, and a lot of it will be in the future. People showing not what we bought, but the accomplishments that a passive is going to do and create. Papua New Guinea is going to be a whole nother world. Uh, once we get going here, I can promise you that uh, Vietnam, <laughs> United States of America, there's going to be a lot of, I think a year after we get going, there's going to be a lot of opening of jobs because a lot of people are going to say, all right, I don't need to work anymore. And I think that's going to change a lot of people's lives. If I could say, I don't, you know, if I didn't have the opportunity to work 32 years and say, wow, if I could change that, what would I have done different? Um, a lot of people say that to themselves, but don't wait till you're 32 years up like this big head here. Say it when you're young. What can I do different that I can enjoy my life, better my family, better everyone around me? Don't be evil. Be truthful and go out and do something different because working for a living, everyone knows it's just not fun. And why not change someone's life? If I could change my son's life or his friends or their friends that are 20, 25 years old, hey, you don't have to go do that rough anymore. I've done all those hard jobs. They suck and they hurt 
And now at, at my 58 years of age, I feel those pains. Uh, a lot of people ask about my eyes. I just went to the eye doctor yesterday, Red. I have sealed tear ducts. I got a cataract in this eye. And my muscles in my eyes are getting weaker. And pretty much sooner or later, my eyes just might be closed. But I'll still be talking. But <laughs> it doesn't matter. I, I have ailments in my life, too. But you just got to keep moving and keep going. And that's really what Ash Mafara did. Uh, when people find out really what's happened in his life, Realize how many times he got knocked down and beat up. Uh, people are going to say, oh, my God, I can't believe this guy went through all this. But look at what he's got today and look at what he gave to millions of people. And, boy, I, you'll really hear me talking then when that happens. So I'm excited about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Chris, it's been an absolute pleasure having you in the chair today. I think we found out a lot about the man behind the Mr. Chris Johnson that we see uh, on the screen here you are my friend same yeah. as marty uh, i love spending time with you guys you know we we it's have party. an unbreakable uh, i have no idea we have an unbreakable bond uh that yeah. we've forged because of on passive uh between us all so just before yeah. we go hi chris it'd be a pleasure please if you can give these lovely people out here some words of wisdom and uh some passing comments before we close that's a tough one for me, Red. Uh, listen, this company is going to do amazing things for people. And all we've ever asked is to check it out. Um, I passed up a lot of things in my life that probably were pretty good because I was afraid. Of all the stuff I did, oh, that ain't going to happen. Stop telling yourself it's not going to happen because it will happen, especially through impassive. When impassive takes off in your life, you're going to be able to do the things that I just talked about, but in your own ways, dreamer. Don't stop dreaming. If you stop dreaming, you might as well just bury yourself because things in life are tough right now, but I promise you they're going to get better for you. You just got to have that faith and that hope and don't let anyone knock you off that, that positive train, man. You just keep rolling on there. That's the best I got. Don't quit. Don't give up. That's what I got. Red, Absolutely. Great job. I'm proud to say that I can work with you on a, uh, at least one week a basis, but we talk every day. Yeah, uh, we do. You're an inspiration to many people. Uh, I always said you missed your calling. You should have been a uh, a, a big speaker on TV, television. <laughs> because you're really good at it. But I love you, man, from the bottom of my heart. And Cheers, I can't Cheers Chris. Day to sit in the pub and have a nice cold beer with Red and Jay. Absolutely. Jane. It's going to happen. You know it's going to happen, I'll tell you. Well, I, owe you like nine cases. I owe you like nine cases of beer right now. Uh, yeah, I, I think we're on a bit of a wave now. I think you keep nicking <laughs> a few back, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Ladies and gents, it's been an absolute pleasure having this man in front of us here, Chris Johnson, uh, in the chair. <laughs> what an absolute inspirational person he is. And it has been an awful, for me, one of the highlights of uh, the chair to have you here. That's it from us, everybody. Uh, we'll see you all Monday for another Monday fun day. And you never know who we're going to have in the chair next week. That's it from us.